see filtration that's inadequate, or in some cases, do you see no filtration at all when it comes to the loop system? Oftentimes both. Yeah, it's, it's, it, if there's something there, it's almost like an afterthought, and it's usually insufficient for what they're dealing with. And when you go into a particle count, you're usually maxing out the upper limits of um, what you can read. Correct. Uh, high viscosity fluids, anywhere from a 680 gear box up to, in some cases, all the way up to 1500 centistokes. That's the call out, so that, that would be at 40 degrees Celsius. And that's just lubricating the bearings. These, these bearings have very small reservoirs, uh, and a lot of the kilns have no filtration on them whatsoever. It's a challenging application because of the viscosity and because of the temperature changes. The viscosity swing is pretty large from uh, uh, a kiln that is not in production versus the temperature of those gearboxes when it is in production. Uh, pumping these fluids is, can be a challenge, just getting the fluid into a pump and then actually filtering these high viscous fluids can be a challenge, one, because of the viscosity, two, because of the dirt load. And that's not even taking into account the drive. The, the, the lubricants on, on the actual drives of the kiln can exceed 6,800, close to 7,000 centistokes. So you talk about the byproduct of the manufacturing process getting into the lube wall. Um, and so we have no filtration. So something needs to be added. Offline filtration seems to me the most obvious. Correct. When you get into the roughing, the roughing mill and the finish mill, most of those systems have some type of filtration on them. But typically what you find is uh, wire mesh elements, typically in the 40 micron size. So you're essentially just filtering the stuff you can see. And that is not going to get the get the fluid clean enough to protect bearings, to protect uh, rotating components. Uh, and that's where you see a lot of the actual product getting into the lubricant. Uh, the, on the finished mill especially, the inlet bearing is a, is a sliding shoe bearing. Uh, over time you'll get wear in that part of the, in that part of the, the, the finished mill and essentially you will get cement powder coming back with the lubricant back into the reservoir and cement's a very abrasive uh, particle and it will cause a lot of wear and when these bearings fail it's a very costly repair. It sounds like air breathing, uh, air, air filtration is uh, fairly important as well. You need to have good breathers, uh, but a lot of the product or a lot of the particulate that we encounter in the roughing mill and the finished mill is not coming through the breathers as much as it's coming from the product getting into the lubricant coming through the bearings on the inlet and outlet of, of, of these systems use the either crush or, or, or or hammer or pulverize the, the, the aggregate into a powder. The finish mill is especially vulnerable because the product is so fine. So, I'll, I mean, both of them, both, both the roughing and the finish, but it seems like the finish mills, the rate of ingression is really high. My, so far, it, it seems like on the roughing mill, once you clean them up, you, you can actually keep them fairly clean without going through a tremendous number of elements. Um, you generally are coming on a system that's really dirty um, because it's a dirty environment, but it's had time to build up. So that's a really nice application because once you clean it up, it, it, you can keep it fairly clean fairly easily. The finish mill, the, the, the big challenge there is the product is so fine. So um, there's not a way to keep it out. So you're going to be dealing with a constant rate of ingression. Correct. So we definitely need to make sure that we size the offline filter skid correctly so that the uh, end user doesn't go through uh, filter changes on a very regular basis.